TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, Jerusalem is convinced that Washington has made a final decision to adopt an interim arrangement to offer sanctions relief in exchange for Iranian agreement to restrict nuclear development. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant travels to Brussels for a meeting with U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin aimed at further bolstering military cooperation vis-a-vis -vis Iran's malign activities. Failure to elect a president in Lebanon is raising sectarian tensions. IDF, Israel Security Agency, and Border Police Special Operations Forces persisted with counterterror activities overnight as part of Operation Wavesbreaker. Ten suspected terror operatives were apprehended during the course of the operations, which were largely concentrated in the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley. A separate mission was carried out in the city of Nablus, where IDF troops demolished the home of one of the terrorists who killed IDF Staff Sergeant Ido Baruch in a shooting attack near Shaveh Shomron last year. Overnight, the Samaria Brigade operated to demolish the house of the terrorist Osama Tal, who perpetrated the shooting attack against a military position in which Staff Sergeant Ido Baruch, may his memory be blessed, was killed. We are talking about complex engineering activity, led by the Special Forces Engineering Unit Yahalom, the engineering branch of the Samaria Brigade, the Javadi Reconnaissance Unit, Sheikh Company, and Border Police Forces. During the operation, Palestinian gunmen opened fire and hurled firebombs and explosive devices and shot fireworks at the Israeli forces. There are no reported injuries on the Israeli side, although a military vehicle was damaged. Palestinian sources said that one of the assailants was killed and that two others were wounded, one of whom is listed as being in serious condition. In other news, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant left for a working visit in Belgium earlier today to hold talks with United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. Ahead of his departure, Jerusalem's top defense official revealed that the primary focus of the summit would be to coordinate a joint response to Iranian nuclear activities, as well as the maintenance of Israeli military superiority in the region. I'm leaving now for Brussels to meet with my colleague and friend, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. In our meeting, we will discuss the shared commitment of both our countries to ensure that Iran will never attain nuclear weapon capabilities. Ahead of this meeting, I met with the Prime Minister and the top brass of the defense establishment, during which we discussed all paths forward for the purpose of ensure Israel's qualitative edge in the Middle East. Top leaders in Jerusalem, it would appear, do not intend to divert efforts by trying to dissuade Washington from reaching a bad arrangement with Tehran and will instead concentrate on the improvement of bilateral military cooperation. And even though there's been a lot of talk about an imminent U.S. arrangement with the Islamic Republic, the State Department adamantly continues to deny that there is any credibility behind those reports. I would say that, as I said yesterday, rumors about a, uh, a nuclear deal, interim or otherwise, are false uh, and misleading. Um, our position uh, on the question has not changed. Uh, we believe uh, our, our, our number one policy is in ensuring that Iran never obtains a nuclear weapon. Uh, so of course we've been watching Iran's enrichment activities. Um, we believe diplomacy is the best path to help achieve that, but we're preparing for all possible options and contingencies. When asked whether the State Department continues to view a revived nuclear deal with Iran out of reach, as was repeatedly stated during the past year, the spokesman pushed back by asserting that the administration of President Joe Biden has maintained a consistent position. I will say we have at all times believed that diplomacy is the best path forward. Um, uh, at the same time, we are not naive about uh, Ar Iran's ambitions and, Ra and Iran's activities, but we have always believed at every step of the way that, uh, that diplomacy is the best path forward for preventing Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. But for the United States, all options are on the table. 
It is worth noting that the U.S. Treasury Department has issued a general license allowing for some transactions with the Islamic Republic Central Bank and the National Iran Oil Company, both of which are sanctioned for the support of terror. As such, the waiver would permit the export of goods and technology relating to the prevention, diagnosis, or treatment of the coronavirus. It is further important to point out that a State Department fact sheet published under the previous administration was highly critical of mismanagement by the Ayatollah regime of so-called humanitarian funds. According to the verified account, quote, in July 2019, 1 billion euros intended for medical supplies disappeared and another $170 million allocated for medical goods were instead spent on tobacco. Moreover, the timing of this latest waiver is questionable since almost no new COVID cases are currently being recorded either in Iran or elsewhere for that matter. In related matters concerning confirmed reports that Iraq was permitted to transfer roughly $2.7 billion to Iran pertaining to the purchase of electricity, the U.S. State Department sought to clarify that none of the funds would be released directly to Iran. Since 2018, the Department of State has provided a number of waivers in consultation with Congress that allow Iraq to pay for electricity imports from Iran by transferring funds into a restricted account in Iraq. Um, consistent with U.S. sanctions, though, and this goes to your question, these funds can be only be accessed for humanitarian and other non-sanctionable transactions by U.S.-approved third parties. The funds are not transferred to Iran. Going back a number of years, these funds have been transferred out of the restricted accounts to pay only for humanitarian and other non-sanctionable transactions. So the United States, we continue to approve these tra the transactions for the use of these funds on a case-by-case -case basis. They can only be used for humanitarian uh, uh, purposes such as uh, food, medicine, and other humanitarian needs. Turning now to Lebanon, where the Iranian proxy Hezbollah and its allies prevented a bid by their Lebanese rivals to elect a top official of the International Monetary Fund as the nation's next president yesterday. The move is not only deepening sectarian tensions, but also further diminishing prospects for averting a collapse of the failing state. After Hezbollah lawmakers essentially realized that their own presidential candidate would fall short in garnering enough backing to be elected, they and their allies hurriedly rushed out of the parliamentary chamber to effectively obstruct any more rounds of voting by a legally required quorum. The powerful armed paramilitary and legislative party has long fought against the ceding of any control that it's long enjoyed under the rule of former Lebanese President Michel Aoun. The Iranian proxy is now insisting that rival factions participate in talks in attempts at reaching a consensus. We consider there was an election and each candidate got the number of votes he got. The election of a president needs dialogue. Would you consider a candidate other than Suleiman Frangi? Suleiman Frangi. Former Minister Suleiman Frangi is our candidate and we call for a dialogue. Despite those demands for dialogue by Hezbollah, the Lebanese members of parliament who have not succumbed to Iranian-fueled corruption are refusing to engage in talks at this stage. We are not opposed to dialogue. No one is against dialogue. At the end of the day, we need to live together and have a dialogue, but you can't invite me for dialogue to say your choice is Suleiman Frangi. Why would I have a dialogue with you? To bring me to your side? I am telling you, your choice destroyed my country and this is why you have to change your mind. As is regrettably the case in most matters related to Lebanon, citizens of the country are the ones to bear the brunt of political turmoil. Of course, we knew this is how the session would go. Since it was called for and they wanted to go ahead with it, they did not postpone it, but of course with no result. We were sure of that. More than 50% or 70% we knew there will be no president. They will agree on a third candidate. There is no other way. We are tired, and no one is able to change anything. They either don't know how to change anything or don't have the intention to. But the result is one, Lebanon and the Lebanese are the biggest losers. Israel continues to closely monitor developments in its northern neighbor, Lebanon, while the United States and France have actively been working to offset the total collapse of the Arab Republic by pressuring its elites to take action.
Uh, we welcomed the vote yesterday, but are concerned that members of parliament left the chamber to prevent further rounds of voting to deny a quorum. Um, uh, after more than seven months without a president, the Lebanese people deserve more than a single vote. Um, we believe, as we have said before, that they urgently need a president who uh, can act in uh, IMF refor uh, enact reforms to unlock IMF support. And for this to happen, Parliament must continue holding electoral sessions in the coming days and weeks to get that job done. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. If you're blessed by our productions and would like to help support TV7 Israel's ongoing operations, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, we would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. Please join us again tomorrow at this time for the latest exciting episode of TV7's Powers and Play program. Jonathan Hassan will be back at this desk to bring you all the latest news from Israel and the Middle East on Monday. I'm Aaron Feiner, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, a blessed evening, and a peaceful Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom from Jerusalem. <laughs>